When I started uh, performing and I joined Alegria, I had to go to school. And because Cirque du Soleil at that point, I mean, still is, but at that point it was originated from Quebec. And Alegria had a lot of kids performing. So the rule was we had two teachers traveling with us and I had to do my school in uh, Quebecois, uh, en français. So what I had to do, uh, my God, where did you get all this images? <laughs> <laughs> you can see I'm already fluent in English here. I'm already talking French with my teacher, Marcia, who is actually here in Quebec and she came last year to see the show. So it was like tears, you know. The kids that performed had to go to school. I had to learn French. So for about a year, I learned only French, continued my Russian school a little bit, but then it became too much. I mean, the Russian, the French, the, the English on the side and so many shows and events. So unfortunately, I dropped the Russian school. So I graduated in uh, French Quebecois in Biloxi, Mississippi when I was 19 in 2000. I would wake up in the morning, take a shuttle, take a bus or a limo would take me from the apartment. We did school from 11 to 4, I believe, because we had shows. On Saturday, we did a little bit because we had Mondays off. So we would do half school on Saturdays and then uh, eight to ten shows a week sometimes i had to take things with me home if i traveled i mean my teachers hate it when i traveled because they're like oh she needs to do this and that but the only thing for us the ministry exams were in a different time because we were performing it's almost like a sportitude here in quebec when you do sports and this and that so but it was so much fun you know we we would come there we would have little snacks and we would go out to museums sometimes to parks I remember in Europe, we would go somewhere because we started doing physics. Jason was the only one who was doing school in French because he came from Chicago. Was that Jason Zulov? Yes, he was 16 then. He was a power track and Russian bar and he was the only one doing school in English. Everybody else was doing it in French. Later on, when there was other kids, years went by, they had a choice to do it in English. But, oh my God, so many hours and so much but I'm so thankful today, you know, because my French is fluent. I read, I write, and now that I moved to Montreal because of that, it's a benefit. Of course, when you're a kid, you don't understand that because it's just like hard, but we had fun. Our teachers were fun, and we did a lot of things besides just performing and would go out and do science labs and museums, different things just to be entertained, you know, so as kids. And it never felt like going to school was like, oh my God, you know, it's hard, even on... Saturday mornings with two show days, you know, it's kind of, and we would get breakfast every morning, you know, people would get the Sunday breakfast, us as uh, kids in the school with technicians, we would get breakfast every morning, so we had like crepes and everything, so it was fun, yeah, we got spoiled, it was good, different kind of school, so, yeah. So I did North American tour, Japan, Europe and then we moved to Biloxi, Mississippi, which was supposed to be permanent five year, 10 year, kind of like, uh, so uh, Steve Wynn, the guy who used to own all the casinos and the shows in Las Vegas, opened uh, a Borivash casino in Biloxi, Mississippi. It's kind of like a mini Bellagio. Decided to take Alegria and put it there as the show. So uh, we were there for about a year and a half. So it was a permanent show in this very tiny city. After that, he sold all the casinos. He said, no more Biloxi, bye-bye, and you're going to Australia. I turned 18. Uh, my mom left to join my dad in Las Vegas. My father was already then working in the stairs. And when they said, Allegria is going to Australia, I said, you know, uh, I had enough because, you know, I was 19. I still missed my parents. I didn't think I could go on tour by myself. And I was ready to do something different. And so I left the show, but I never stopped because then I joined a special event with Cirque. It wasn't 45 degrees yet, there was special events. And there was about three to four people or acts that were always traveling and representing Cirque in different events. So I would travel a lot. And then about seven months later, they called me and they said, hey, we're shooting the DVD. And oh, of course, I mean, you know, I already then had my backup, but uh, it's my act, it's 
my show. So <laughs> the only thing I said, if you change my costume, because form of a woman and the whole thing, so the yellow costume didn't fit me well anymore, so was May of 2001. And I stayed until about September, October. I stayed longer because the girl who was replacing me got injured. And so I went to shoot the DVD and I stayed there and worked for about four to five months. And after that, I got an offer to go to Kidam. Olga, who did hand balancing, was leaving for Varikai, and they also hired me temporarily as a backup act of her. Not a backup, but full time. But I was supposed to be there for a month, and I stayed for a year. So I toured uh, for a year with Kidam. I was already 20 years old, so that was a fun show. You know, I I love not to stop in my life always want to move and create something different so for me at that age and that time i had alegria but i wanted cirque and other people to see me as you know as a grown-up girl at some point and a different person but every time i did events or something they're like alegria alegria i'm like can i do something else can i do something else it like took me many years to understand that Alegria is my heart, my soul. But at that point, you know, you're a teenager, you want to grow, you want to evolve, you want to do other things. So it was constantly doing something different. So that's Kidam. And the stage turned, and I have a tattoo there, and the costume was all like, and the music was all dark. And it was my the first time I went on tour without my parents. And uh, it was it was fun. It was a good group of people and a fun show to do. So yeah. I had lots of fun. This is the season of Wintook. Cirque du Soleil presents Wintook, a winter adventure that Yeah, it's not well known, but it, again, it was a funny, weird, different production. We did four seasons, so basically it was like a seasonal show uh, at Madison Square Garden at Wamu Theater underneath. It was a winter show with puppets. The stage was kind of very long and panoramic, so the theater was 4,000 seats, packed every day. We did three months for four years, 12 shows a week. It was something, I'll tell you. At that point, I was already a mother. My daughter was uh, turning two or a year and a half. Yeah, she was a year and a half. We did creation in Montreal for about six weeks, and then we moved to New York, winter time. And we did two days off, two shows, two shows, two shows, and then three, three on Saturday, Sunday. It was the, the schedule of Broadway for Christmas. I was playing uh, one of the main characters, it's called the Priestress, so very cold and frozen. I remember some people telling me, finally, Elena, they gave you the character that you deserve and you look alike. I'm like, thanks, you know, like the Russian frozen queen. I was like, it's fine. The first season was very tricky. They were doing puppets, the stage was like open, it was like a test and then Season two, three, and four were like fantastic. We were always packed, always sold out. It was mostly uh, little kids and grandparents because it was Christmas show. First show on like Saturday, Sunday started at 11 a.m. Can you imagine when it's like you finish the night before, you get home at like 11, and at eight o'clock you already have to go. At nine o'clock you're putting like makeup in the frozen like dressing room with like a bagel and a coffee. It was a tough, schedule you know especially for like when you have to warm up and stretch and everything unfortunately i got my hip surgery uh season four after that because it was a lot of shows and i was a mom in between two seasons i went back to kidam so when everybody was like kind of resting i went so it was like a you know a non-stop but the show was great the cast and crew was fantastic and i mean new york in the fall and winter was beautiful we spent four years there somehow people kind of forgot about the show so <laughs> recently i think they were they were looking to create like a once upon a time or they did and they're like oh the first christmas show so when we first started on this project i think everybody was very surprised that cirque had never done a christmas show before no 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 no, no. Like winter was the first all oh, right we forgot i'm like don't you forget like because it was challenging we did a lot for that show it was a lot of mostly like guest acts and a very small house troupe Rolla Bola from Spain, a juggler from Germany, me and then other things. So people were like spread out. We weren't there all year long. So when we would come together, we had creation, recreation every year for about three weeks. 
and to change things and to remember the show and to get back at it and by the time it was season four the show looked fantastic and they were even thinking to take it on tour like to australia for christmas in july but um it was made specially for that theater so it was panoramic so the stage couldn't fit anywhere and they couldn't make it smaller because it was a lot of skateboarders and rollerblades and they needed the space to run and skate and at the end of the show we had 4,000 snowflakes fall and all kids went crazy so when you walk out from the theater you can follow the snowflakes and the trees so it was cute it was cute yeah I kept on doing events and then I joined Spiegel World and we did a little show called Empire. Again, they didn't want hula hoops, so they put me in this bubble and I did a bubble act, contortion bubble act, which I'm not an aerialist. I hate the air, I'm scared of heights, but I did it. And then, uh, so we performed for three months on Broadway in the summer and I did my hula hoop act as a backup act. And then after that, uh, they said we're going either to Japan or to Australia. And I wanted to go back to Australia so bad after I went with Alegria. It was like my dream country. So 10 years later, I went. My daughter was seven. She came with me. And so I did 10 months. Again, they didn't want hula hoops, but then the girl that they took on board to do uh, the act they wanted got injured, premiere. And so I ended up for 10 months doing two acts. I would open the show with a bubble and I would close it with hula hoops for 10 months. And I had my daughter who was in second grade doing homeschool. It was like insane. And uh, I was going through other like life changes things during that time. So by the time it hit like summer, I was about to quit. My daughter was like, I want to go back home. I want to do school at home. The artistic director of Zumanity calls me and goes, Hey, Lena, where are you at in the world? I'm in Australia and I'm about to quit and leave. She's like, how about you come with me to Zumanity? And I was like, oh my God, like my guardian angel, you know? I gave my notice, I left, and I signed a temporary contract for Zumanity for five months to replace the girl that was there who was injured, and I stayed for six years. <laughs> so kind of like a temp contract for five months that came kept on being for a year and a half then they did a refresh and unfortunately again they didn't want to give me a contract but they were happy to keep me on call like a backup act somehow I worked well as a backup act everywhere because I've done again so many events and shows like I did my act in the pool on the horse on the ice on the table so basically I ended up being on call for the last like four and a half years but it pushed me to do other things in life which i'm thankful for and i pr still performed a lot but i went to school i graduated college i worked as a internship and then full-time as assistant to company manager and performed at the same time yeah, as a manager you were doing two positions two positions yeah being a backup act you need to be ready to go it's not even a backup act that you're in a show but on call meaning if if I'm driving my daughter from school and they had a limit at 3.30 p.m., they call you and they go, hey, are you available? And you go, yes. Of course, you can say no, but I was always available. My problem is that I can never say no, you know, because I love performing so much and because I love what I do so much. But then at one point, um, just before coming on to Alegria last year, for about five months, I was full on time as a assistant to company manager. So I was in the office upstairs on the fourth floor. So when the phone rang and, hey, Elena, can you be in the show tonight? It was very easy to go up and down, <laughs> you know? So I would sit on the computer and do everything I had to do and then go down, do my makeup warm up, go up, do the rest of my emails between the shows, answer the questions to the artists already in makeup in front of the computer, go back to the second show, close up and same thing. So. It was challenging, challenging because I like being busy and I like to be challenged, but when you're a performer, there's certain, let's say, especially for me, because I do contortion, flexible and all that stuff. So I have to eat a certain way, not eat later than a certain hour, warm up very well because, you know, with the age and blah, blah, blah. But when you're in the office, 
basically ah oh, here's a coffee here's another here's a snack here's a thing you sit on your you know booty all day and you do the stuff it's a different um, lifestyle so uh, just to maintain that this is where at that point I understood that okay I either gonna transition into office girl and be done with performing but I wasn't done with performing because every night that I sat there behind a computer and I watched the stage and people on stage I wasn't ready to be done so when Alegria called and we did the reunion that year and then after they said would you like to come back it was a whole process of going back on tour oh my god full circle back to Alegria oh my god like looking at youtube and all the followers and the videos i was like oh my god i had no idea it was emotional and going through creation at 37 having a teenager daughter the body's different proving yourself and others some people didn't think i was still performing it was like reproving myself to a lot of people you know to but look at that you're like still in top shape i still am seven months later without doing anything <laughs> Yeah. you see different costume different music different and i'm super glad that they they did that and i went with it as well because a lot of people are like oh we miss your music we miss your green costume yes i would probably still fit and look okay in that green costume in the music but who i am today and so many years later this is what is today on stage to show people i'm a woman i'm a strong woman i went through a lot of things and i don't stand on one spot yes it's still my tricks it's still my act it's the things that i still do but here every night especially in montreal somebody was watching there was pictures on Instagram and posts and comments and I was humbled and overwhelmed so every day when I would come out on stage it was just like first and last time because it was it was incredible it was like the feeling was amazing what does your daughter think about it like when she watches you oh, like even now like the fact that we are in Montreal she's in school in secondary cat en français it's like a full circle deja vu, like it's just amazing. The whole story of coming back to Alegria, yes, a little bit different show, but still, you know, 25 years later, having my daughter almost the same age as when I started, having her see the show and then she goes back and sees the DVD, even like family and friends and my teachers and everybody just come and visit and when I gave few interviews and people say, so how you feel, how'd you feel then? I was like, you know, then? I didn't realize what I was living because I was still a kid and because it was mostly my parents that, you know, I didn't know better. And of course, this gave me an opportunity and a time to look back and appreciate every step, every practice, every moment, starting from rhythmic gymnastics, my parents and uh, Moscow and Alegria and just like everything, every day I was reliving. And every time a person would come and visit somebody from the tour, it was like, boom flashback flashback you know and the emotions were like incredible me saying okay I'm done with Allegria or I'm done performing or, you know who knew but of course with age you get wiser and you understand the meaning and the saturation of everything and of course my daughter watching me she realizes like how much I work how hard I work she would spend uh, a few days a week with me in the artistic tent and watch me train and then watch me warm up because she didn't grow up with me there you know at some point like Zumania couldn't have kids in the theater or she was going to school and doing other things and for people who were there in the beginning didn't think I was still performing hoops will never be in Cirque du Soleil and they still are <laughs> guess what so. They're, they were still there until this whole yes thing. and uh I, I was very proud I, I you know I was ready to not ready but I knew that Allegria was going to be the closing of my uh, performing chapter I didn't know how much how long I did realize that the age that I am today and was the creation and 10 shows a week and all the emotions and everything that I did not miss one show so so far we did 371 I did not miss any <laughs> so I'm very happy and very proud Again, I did a lot of promotions. We did another like VR shooting and we did a lot of different things. And I said yes to everything because they were like, Elena, stop. I'm like, no, no, I'm here to do that. I'm here to live to the fullest, to the end, because I knew 
that this was it. When? Pandemic, but I still don't think it's not it. I'm right now not thinking about it, but my wish was to finish on stage with Allegria at Full Circle and to transition into other things in my life, artistically and creative and direction and all that stuff. So we will still keep that in mind. <laughs> keep that in mind and please don't, don't stop when we all come back from all of this. Yeah, hopefully, we don't know how long and that's why my body is a little bit, it's like, you know, I, I, I will be honest, I took a break for a few months, I do a little bit here and there, but my body was tired. I didn't realize how tired it was. And of course, discipline of 10 shows a week when you are, you know, 12 and 20 and then 30, it's, it's very different. Of course, there's other things like being a mom and this and that. So there's, you know, I don't do school anymore, but I do other things. But that was my, my goal and my concentration. So now my body controls me at this point. I'll work out and then something will hurt and I'll go, okay, I rest for two days, three days, maybe a week. And then I go back to it, but it's still there. Sometimes when I take the hoop, I mean, I can wake up and do it in my sleep, but sometimes people are like, oh my God, you're still in shape. I'm like, yeah, I don't know how it's still there. <laughs> so, so I really hope, I really hope it's not the end and that We'll, we'll get to do it who knows when, but um, better not to just give yourself a time because, you know, I've done it before where I gave myself a timeline or something and, you know, forget about it. It's just not it. So we'll stay positive. We can keep talking for like another God knows when. For me, this is all of this is fascinating. Well, uh, thank you for this because I, I, like I said, I have a lot of, you know, fans and friends and people that exactly they don't know the whole story and yeah. somehow um i'll be honest i am writing a book so i am writing a biography and a full circle i started it and right now with everything happening it's a little challenge but th that one also will go into details and it goes into details you know of like me being little and this and that but these little things are i'm i'm super happy i can you know like share with you another people that have no idea. I actually only feel now um, comfortable to share them and say, yes, I was the first, I was the youngest, and I'd like for you to know where it came from and thank you for following and you know doing what I do, but this is where it all began. So, and of course, to just kind of thank my parents because I mean, the biggest thing started with them and from them and everything. So they deserve a big round of applause and for all the pictures and the videos and everything that's been taken and still there to, for us to be able to see all this material and just kind of remember, not forget always where you come from. So it's important. Yep, that's Japan. Your dad. Hi, Your Bar. Mom. My mom, yeah. coach. Yeah, my mom, uh, when I would go to events, she would have a costume that they would put on her and she had to make up, she hated it so much, but we would travel just me and her so they wouldn't pull any assistance unless it was in the city where they could take the artist to go and do the assistance. Usually my mom would be the one to like throw the hoops and catch the hoops and be there with me, so. Elena, thank you again for doing this and thank you for making this actual first episode happen. Thank you for doing this. Be strong, keep practicing and follow your dreams. Never give up and never look back, only forward. Thank you for watching part two of Live Entertainment Talk with Yelena Lev. Did you enjoy it? Then subscribe to stay up to date with our latest content. Stay safe, be healthy, and let's keep the culture of live entertainment alive.